this year's algo bloom, which in Toledo has become, if I, you would have ever told me in my lifetime I would know this much about <laughs> algae, I would have told you you were crazy. So um, what's happening right now? Um, I know it's actually, there's a little bit of concern in the city of Toledo right now. Well, you know, we've had the perfect conditions for the bloom to, to uh, appear and, of course, expand this year with all of the, the runoff, the rainfall we had in, in, in June particularly, feeding nutrients into the lake. Uh, the algae will then will take those up. And then in the last few weeks, of course, the weather's got much warmer. The water is warming up, a lot of sunlight. So the, we've been tracking the algae bloom. We've seen it start to grow and expand in the recent weeks uh, and been monitoring that very closely. Very quickly compared, you know, last Monday to this Monday, uh, is that quickly or is that just how it works? It goes from like it, at first it was over closer to Maumee Bay, then it kind of shifted a little bit, and then it just went exploded. Right, well, exploding kind of yeah is a really good analogy for it. Yeah, it's the, it's perfect conditions. The, the the water is calm. We don't have a lot of wind to move it or, or break it up or distribute it. And again, the water is getting very warm. We have a lot of sunlight, so it will take up that energy and grow and expand very, very quickly. It can happen in a matter of days or a week to see that expansion. And um, as we were talking off camera, um, we actually had what a perfect setup in June when we had those what, days and days and days, weeks of rain almost daily. That has attributed to this. Yeah, and we saw that coming. We were, you know, in terms of the federal and state agencies and the folks that, that monitor. Uh, our river flows, we, we saw that uh, near record amounts of rainfall and discharge and sediment nutrients moving through the Maumee River into the basin after all of that heavy rain throughout much of June. And so what is the probability it could get even bigger? I mean, is there a chance that this could get even larger or even shrink for that matter? Well, we're really at the, the hands of the weather. So uh, will it stay warm and sunny? Will we see, you know, we have enough westerly winds that will start to push the bloom and out into the central basin be less of an issue for us in the shallower waters here in, in the western basin. So we really have to see what the, the, the short term weather is going to bring in terms of how that bloom expands and where it goes uh, and, and how it's distributed across the lake. And this week, um, which we really had the same pattern over several days, it looks like if, if things hold steady, we could have some good news as far as the location of the bloom later this week. Yeah, looking at some of the long-term forecasts from NOAA and some of the agencies, we, we expect to see a shift and then get more of those westerly winds, which will then push that uh, into the central basin and away from the area from the Maumee River, Maumee Bay, uh, where the wind take is for the city of Toledo and Sandusky. should shift that more into the central basin, much deeper, cooler water, and distribute the bloom. Now explain to me, because I'm not totally clear. So just because there's an algal bloom, they actually aren't constantly releasing toxins, is that correct? correct? So what, are they releasing toxins right now, or is there still more that could come? Well, that's what the city has uh, detected in the area around the crib, where the water treatment is off the shore of Lake Erie. They're seeing very, very low levels of the microcystin toxin. So they're tracking that to see, are we going to see an increase in, in the lake, and also will it come into the system itself. We don't know a lot about the mechanisms as to why the algae releases the toxin, what triggers it, what its response is. That's part of one of the questions we don't really understand. There's probably a number of mechanisms that work there, but we can detect it. We're doing much more monitoring and testing of it, and we're watching closely to see, is it going to increase? So we have much more frequency of monitoring and be able to know more quicker than years past if we start seeing higher levels in the lake and then we want to watch to make sure that's not then moving into the water treatment system. So is the trick now is, um, <laughs> if there is a trick, is the perfect scenario would be to get the winds to shift, it to move away from the intake before more toxins are released? Correct. Yes, that would be the, that's what we're looking for, uh, and if the forecast looks like that, we might be in that situation. And then, of course, throughout the rest of the summer, to monitor that, you know, will the bloom continue to emerge? Will it move again? Um, the bloom season typically runs into September, so something you just have to monitor, you know, with the city of Toledo, NOAA, University of Toledo, and other partners. We have a lot of buoys out in the lake. We're monitoring and we're collecting data much more frequently so we can track the progress of the bloom and also begin to track with sampling what we're seeing in terms of the microcystin uh, toxin in the water. Wonderful. Is there anything I forgot to ask you? I think I just got a great education for free right here. <laughs> uh, no, I just think, you know, compared to last year, 
you know, procedures are put into place, the testing is better, it's happening more frequently, we're getting uh, samples turned around faster, and that allows a water treatment plant, because they have the ability to treat and remove the toxin, they just want uh, more lead time, and they can respond faster now, and that we're getting more information, more quicker, so they're prepared, because there are, the technology exists to be able to treat it through the system so it doesn't end up in our drinking water. We can do that in a much more quicker timeline than compared to a year ago.